Welcome to Prophetic Insights. I'm Hilary Henriquez. I'm Pastor Andrew Henriquez. We just want to remind you, friends, that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves each and every one of us. And infinitely higher than we can ever comprehend is his desire to see each and every one of us saved. And therefore, he allows Satan's sophistries, his deceptions, his delusions, his tactics, his devices to be exposed so that we will not be taken and be ensnared by them and lost. And so we're going to be analyzing today a sermon that was given August 1st, 2015 at Walla Walla University Church by Walla Walla senior pastor Alex Bryan. Now, some may be inquiring, why? Why are you going to pick on one man, one local church, one sermon that was preached? Is it important for all of Adventism to be aware of of this one sermon? I mean, isn't this just a localized issue? And before you answer that, I just want to say that we are not personally attacking Alex Bryan in any way, shape or form. The issues that we're going to be discussing go beyond Alex Bryan. Jesus wants him saved. He loves Alex Bryan. He died for him. He died for all of us. And so we're not just nitpicking or uh, choosing to pick on this individual. I must say I came across this sermon by Alex Bryan as I was reading a few articles on Spectrum magazine website and they posted, they featured Alex Bryan's sermon from August 1st and I saw that Alex Bryan had posted the transcript of that message and what we need to understand is that Alex Bryan is influential around the world. He travels around Seventh-day Adventism. And what I have come to understand is that many of the conference pastors around the world, even in the North American division, that they invite him frequently to speak to their congregants, to do youth rallies for the young people, to do camp meetings, and also to hold workshops to train pastors. And the theories, the theories, the teachings in this message preached by Alex Bryan on August the 1st, these are soul-destroying theories. Anyone who accepts these theories, he or she will be lost if he or she does not repent. This is how serious this message that Alex Bryan taught on August 1st is. And what we need to understand is that Alex Bryan is also the co-founder and one of the main speakers of the One Project Movement, which is also intimately connected with the emerging church movement. And both entities, their objective is to demote doctrines. They believe in pluralism. They believe in ecumenism. They teach and practice the, t the theories of contemplative prayer, mysticism, spiritual formation. But why is it then that someone such as Alex Bryan and others that hold the same sentiments are allowed to travel throughout Adventism teaching these errors that go contrary to scripture, contrary to what we know to be true as Adventists, and yet Someone such as Doug Batchelor is marginalized. Doug Batchelor is excluded to speak in certain churches and certain conferences because of his biblical stance on what uh, on women's role in ministry. Why is that? Isn't that hypocrisy? Did not President Ted Wilson in his inaugural address when he was first uh, brought in to be president say that the teachings of spiritualism, ecumenism, emerging church, all of the various errors that you mentioned, didn't he say those have no place in our church? So why is he not being marginalized? Why are we not uh, calling for him to step down? And, and what we're also seeing, not only Pastor Doug Batchelor now has been marginalized, but as we looked at David Gates and countless others, and what we're also seeing here is that Alex Bryan, he was a pastor 
Seventh-day Adventist pastor over a congregation. And the theories, his doctrines, led that church into Sunday keeping. Wow. They renounced the Sabbath and began to keep Sunday as their day of worship. And these same teachings are in this message that Alex Bryan preached on August 1st that we are going to analyze. Mm. And what we are also seeing is we're not going to spend the time to re-preach the message that Alex Bryan presented on, on August 1st. I recall when Sister White was dealing with uh, uh, John Harvey Kellogg's and his teachings of pantheism and mysticism and spiritualism. Sister White clearly says that the brethren were not to sit down and listen to John Harvey Kellogg's theories mm. or else they themselves will be deceived or would be deceived. So our, our purpose here is not to re-preach the sermon but to highlight some of the glaring soul destroying errors in that message. And as I read the transcript, I saw that Alex Bryan was teaching principles from even Pope Francis, doctrines from the playbook of the papacy. That's shocking. Let's get into mm. it. One of the primary things that caught my attention is that in that sermon preached by Alex Bryan, he stated that the most important commandment from God is that we must care for the environment. And he says the caring of the environment is the premier, his words, premier commandment of God. And that this supersedes even the keeping of God's Ten Commandments. This is what he states in his sermon. First, to the question of the meaning of the commandment of God. Historically, Adventists have insisted upon this idea. We have been called to keep all, not some. All, not some. And as you might know, particular focus was given in preaching and practice of the fourth of the 10 Sinai commandments. So does all include the premier command of God to Adam and Eve that they must be good caretakers of the earth? That they, that we must cradle the land, the water, the air and the sky, that we must nurture the forest and fields, the animals of ground, the birds of air, the fish of rivers, lakes and seas. Does all include a robust Genesis 1 verses 28 through 30 style environmentalism? This sounds like some of the same teachings Pope Francis wrote in his encyclical on climate change, Laudato Si. And very subtly, Alex Bryan is trying to make it seem as if that the, uh, the keeping of God's Ten Commandments, it's on, it's on the same level, or let me say it this way. What he's trying to say is, is that the caring for the environment is on the same level, on par, with the keeping of God's Ten Commandments, it is not. God's Ten Commandments are a transcript of His character. And what Alex Bryan is trying to do is to say that when God gave the instruction to Adam, Adam and Eve to care for the garden, that that uh, preceded the giving of the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai when God spoke the Ten Commandments. Since the Ten Commandments are a transcript of God's character, it simply means that before God made the earth and created the earth and formed Adam and even Eve, the Ten Commandments were already in existence because the Ten Commandments are a transcript of God's character. Mm. So now we need to understand that God's character we are both to receive and reflect that is the most important thing not caring for the environment but to receive God's character and to reflect God's character it's Christ object lessons page 6 to 9 which says when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people then God will come for his people it is uh, 
it is for us not only to look for, but to hasten Amen. his coming. And as we receive God's character and we reflect God's character, then connected with that, it's worship. Worship. And worship is seen in God's Ten Commandments, specifically the Fourth Commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That is the premier commandment. Worship, why? The controversy is over worship. The great controversy between Christ and Satan, it's over worship. worship. That's right. And there's a few questions that we have to address. Which commandments were immortalized and are now in the heavenly sanctuary? Which set of commandments were written with the very finger of God? And as I mentioned, they're immortalized even now in the heavenly sanctuary, according to Revelation 11, verse 19. And which commandment was Sister Ellen G. White shown with a halo of light around it when she was given a vision of the heavenly sanctuary? It had nothing to do with the environment. And yet, Alex Bryan is going to present that soul-destroying error, heresy, in a Seventh-day Adventist pulpit. And when he travels, what is he teaching this? God saints, hear what it says. Mm -hmm. Great controversy, page 605 says, The Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty, for it is the point of truth especially controverted. Hmm. Well, that's akin to the second error that we'll be looking at that came out of this, uh, mm. this sermon that was preached. Basically, that our mission as Seventh-day Adventists isn't to focus on the sacred hours of the Sabbath. That's trivial. That's meaningless. But again, we're, our focus is to be on the preservation of the environment. This is what he says. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. So here he's going to explain uh, what that phrase means in his own mind. Here are they that keep the commandments of God is not about small time habits of piety. Rather, it portends massive epic dreams for our terrestrial ball. Could it be that we Adventists need to imagine an ever larger commandment mission? where we dare to obey God's clear commands, that we labor, for example, to beat modern day swords into modern day plowshares, and that we resolve to hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees. And what text did he quote there? That we resolve to hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees. That he said, this is more important Hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees. Take care of the environment. That this is more important than keeping the sacred hours of the Sabbath. Maybe you missed it. It says, he, he said, here are they that keep the commandments of God. Is not about small time habits of piety. What is a small time habit of piety? The sacred hours of the Sabbath. It's very interesting and very unfortunate that Alex Bryan would say the most important thing is to care for the environment. Then he quotes Revelation 7 and verse number 3 saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, that this is more important. But furthermore, it is not man who God tells not to do that. That's He's right. speaking to the angels yes. who were about to close probation on this earth. The point I'm driving home he here is, is that Revelation 7 is one of our texts that points to our mission as Seventh-day Adventist Christians. And Alex Bryan subtly has now taken that text the seventh chapter of Revelation that speaks about the sealing of God's people. And now he has misinterpreted that text and he has now misapplied that text. This scripture that talks about the purpose, the reason why God has delayed his coming because his people are not yet sealed. Now, did God give us a mission in these last days to care for the environment above not at all. Honoring the Ten Not Commandments? No. Above honoring God's seven-day Sabbath? Which then, is the seal. Th then what is our mission? Testimonies for the church. 
volume 9, page 19 reads, this is our mission. It says, in a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been sent in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. Listen now. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. And furthermore, in that message that Alex Bryan uh, preached on August 1st, in that transcript, as I read what he was saying, and you can imagine, as I began to read those first earlier points, I said, Lord have mercy, what other soul destroying error is in this message? I felt as if when God said to Ezekiel, look at the abomination mm -hmm. in Israel in Ezekiel chapter 8, and Ezekiel could not believe it. No. Could not believe it, Hillary. And God said to Ezekiel, you haven't seen anything yet. Look Ezekiel, again. look a little more, look a little further. And he began to weep, and that's how I felt. As I read that transcript, all those people who sat in that pew, even those who now heard the message, watched the message, read the transcript as it was posted on Spectrum magazine and have read it thinking, oh, this is wonderful light from God, not from the God of creation, no, no. but the, oh, the God of this world, not from Christ Jesus. And notice now, he said in that message, all throughout the message, it shows he demoted the keeping of the commandments, the keeping of the Sabbath, and correspondingly, he exhorted the material world. Yes, and you know, the thematic threads that are running throughout this is environmentalism, as you mentioned, and the demotion of the Sabbath. And that brings us to another error that is brought out uh, that he Read that basically is promoting. And it's basically saying, he says this, keeping the commandments of God, all of them, not some, is about a full life, heart, mind, soul, strength, commitment to the vision of the spirit God for the material world, the spirit God for the material world we call home. Just pause right there, Hillary. Mm -hmm. He says the keeping, keeping the commandments of God means having commitment to the vision of the spirit God. I wonder what it means by that. The spirit God for the material world we call home. Finish it up. An abundant commandment focused Adventism goes well beyond coldly declaring that the seventh day of the week is actually the Sabbath mm. and that we better show up for church at 11 a.m. So in other words, the keeping of the commandments of God means more. So we shouldn't focus on declaring to the world that the seventh day Sabbath is God's Sabbath. The seventh day of the week is God's Sabbath. The keeping of the commandments, according to Alex Bryan now, means we must focus on the material world. That is serious because the Bible tells us in Romans chapter one, that any person who focuses primarily on creation, on the creature, and speak more about the creatures, more about creation, and less about worshiping the creator of creation, that person will receive the wrath of God. Hmm. Go to Romans chapter one. The wrath of God is the seven last plagues. Mm, mm, mm. The wrath of God falls upon those who received the mark of the beast. So it brings us back to Sunday again, environmentalism and Sunday sacredness. And the movement to take care of creation, at the same time demoting the keeping of God's commandments, honoring God's Sabbath. Remember, Alex Bryan first said, the premier commandment mm. is caring for the environment and it supersedes 
the Ten Commandments from Sinai. That is serious. And the Bible tells us now, now you can understand. While I was reading the transcript of his message, I felt like crying for his personal soul salvation. And for those who were sitting in the church that day, it says this, Romans chapter 1 verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, it says, and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Then verse 25 says, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped, it says, and worshipped, it says, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So those who spend more time talking about cre uh, our creation, let's take care of creation and demoting as Alex Bryant has done so far in that message. The Ten Commandments, Sabbath keeping, these individuals hold the truth in unrighteousness because he still professes to be a Seventh-day right. Adventist. So he holds the truth in, in unrighteousness. And they are the ones, the Bible says, will receive the wrath of God, the seven last plagues, if they do not change. And notice now, where will this lead to? It says, the Bible says, it will lead to homosexuality wow. lesbianism sodomy mm. Romans chapter 1 verse 26 for this cause it's a following for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their woman they change the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was meet I want you all to write down second Kings chapter 23 verse number verse number five and verse number seven it says ancient Israel as they began to focus on creation as they began to praise and worship the creature creation it says the next step was they began to participate and support sodomy wow. second Kings 23 verse 5 and verse number 7 and the sad reality is the same sentiments of Alex Bryan is also the sentiment of Pope Francis he's using the very words from Pope Francis playbook additionally he also tries to redefine what keeping God's commandments means. Now, if we want to find out what the keeping of God's commandments are and also what constitutes keeping God's commandments, we have God's word. But Alex Bryan has taken it upon himself to come up with his own definition of what that means. And we'll read that now. It says here. Does all, speaking about keeping all of God's commandments, based on chapter 14 of the Revelation, verse 12, he has also redefined, reinterpreted, reapplied Revelation 14, verse 12, which is our creed, That's which right. is our mission, yes. which is one of the central pillars Pillar. of Seventh-day Adventism. The messenger of the Lord, Sister White says, Revelation 14, verse 12, the third angel's message from verse 9 through verse 12, the third angel's message, it is righteousness by faith in verity. But this pastor has redefined that message. It says, quoting the preacher, does all include in our post fall reality a radical commitment? to serve the poor among us, to shear, to sacrifice, to bring the less fortunate fully to the table of fellowship. I wonder what if Adventists took on the work of spiders, spinning webs with the intent of capturing what is right and noble about the world. What would happen if we started to celebrate atheists what would happen if we started to celebrate atheists fighting disease in Africa, Catholics 
feeding the hungry in India. Presbyterians preaching the gospel in New York and Quakers waging peace wherever they are. What if Adventists became known as peerless proponents of the work of God in the world, not only through our own commitments, but in the ample applause we render to others who are keeping his commandments as well. That's shocking. Now, wait a second. What blatant blasphemy. So you mean to tell me that an atheist is keeping the commandments of God, the Catholics, as it's, they stand now, the Catholics who have expunged the second commandment from the Decalogue, who have totally uh, destroyed sanctity for God's true seventh day Sabbath. They're keeping the commandments because they're feeding the hungry and doing good deeds. The Presbyterians are preaching the gospel. What kind of gospel are they preaching? Well, the ecumenical gospel that this same pastor is preaching, I guess. But they're considered as keeping the commandments of God as they stand now. This is blasphemous, to say the least. I mean, so good deeds based on this, what he's saying here, cancel out obedience to God's law. Because he, he is re redefining. That's right. What, it, what the Bible says is a definition of keeping the commandments of God. So I can be an atheist, but as long as I go out and feed the homeless, as long as I go out and do good deeds for the marginalized of society, the oppressed, and I champion the cause for the downtrodden, I'm keeping the commandments of God. And be in mind, the great controversy is not over between Christ and Satan. It's not over how many homeless people you feed, how many... Um, um, hungry people you feed, homeless people you shelter. But the great controversy is over the law of God, God's character. That's right. And the Catholic Church has done a perfectly good job of totally uh, destroying. Well, you could never destroy the character of God, but of of misinterpreting, misconstruing the character of God and causing many to look upon God's character with disdain. If you throw away the Ten Commandments, you throw away God's character. Exactly, exactly. Matthew 7, Matthew 7 and verse number 22 says, Many will say to me, Christ speaking, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast our devils, listen now, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. It's the word of God, God's commandments. That's right. But we're not saying that feeding the hungry is not important. Of course that's important. Mm. But at the same time, that does not cancel, cancel out our duty, our obligation to keep every last precept, every last commandment in the Decalogue. In that message from Alex Bryan, you can tell, I'm going to read a few words here. Hillary, I'm going to read a few words here. And you are going to see for yourself, hear for yourself, Alex Bryan. I believe he got that sermon that he preached August 1st from somebody in the world. He got that message from Pope Francis himself. Listen to what this says. So that's where his inspiration is coming from, folks. It says here, and before I read it, I just want to draw attention to the fact that this wasn't in the uh, body of the sermon. This was in the footnote. So most people, as they're reading a transcript of something, they don't usually take the time to read a footnote. But we saw pastor saw the number six and he said, let me see what this footnote is saying. Yes. And it caught his attention. And the footnote, this is what it says. Sabbath keeping in all its meaning is something. Is something Adventists need to focus more on, not less. Sabbath calls us to radical stewardship of creation. Don't forget that revolutionary economic concern for all who work and disruptive recreation of our calendars where time investment in family and community challenge the worship of unbridled material consumption and productivity. You know, 
anyone who is uh, privy, knowledgeable of what's going on in the world, especially with the rapid movement of the papacy, Pope Francis right now, especially in his encyclical to combat climate change, can definitely see that these four points from Alex Bryan on this issue right here came directly from Pope Francis' uh, playbook. Again, it says, quoting Alex Bryan, it says, Sabbath calls us to radical stewardship of creation. I have an article right here. Pope Francis says his Sabbath is Sunday. His mm -hmm. Lord's Day is Sunday. And it says, headline, Catholic News Service, the Pope's practical tips for helping the environment. One, it says, go to Sunday Mass, receive the sacraments, and encounter God in everything. Rest on Sundays. This came directly from Pope Francis, Laudato Si, encyclical on climate change. Then Alex Bryan, the second point was, let us revolutionize the economy for all who work. Who is now championing worldwide? We must take care of the poor. Listen to what this says from Pope Francis. CNBC, it says, Pope Francis calls for new economic order for the poor. Then it says, Alex Bryan, he says, we need to work. He says, we must invest time in the family and community. Who is championing these points? Now, if these points were isolated, we could say, well, sure. but they're all connected. That's right. That's right. They're all connected in one paragraph. Listen to what this says. Catholic Son, it says, the papers are speaking, Sundays must be a day of rest dedicated to God and the family. So is Pope Francis actually saying, I'm sorry, is Alex Bryan actually saying that the same way we should be keeping the Sabbath is the same way that Catholics keep their Sabbath, which is Sunday? The point here is, hmm. the point here is, uh, these teachings mm -hmm. from Alex Bryan are similar, the same as the teachings of the papacy. Hmm. So we have to also now see those who accept these teachings from Alex Bryan and others who are teaching and preaching these right. theories will end up receiving the mark of the beast and if they die without repentance they die lost souls listen what he says number four he says uh, the sabbath we must challenge the worship of unbridled material consumption where did he get that phrase from unbridled material consumption well let's take a look here this is the guardian from Reuters. it says headline on bright pope Francis speaking, unbridled capitalism is the dung of the devil, says Pope Francis. He's getting his theories from the papacy, which shows us now Alex Bryan is eating from Jezebel's table. And the modern day Jezebel is the papacy. It's popery. He's eating from Jezebel's table, taking the teachings, the theories from the papacy. And as he serves these teachings now mm -hmm. and listen that day when he gave that sermon mm -hmm. august 1st he said before his church i just came back from traveling doing ministry so what was he teaching these wow. individuals the young people mm -hmm, the young people at wisconsin Oshkosh. What was he teaching then with his uh, his partner Sam Leonore? What do they, what are they teaching the church? And those who partake of these theories, they also will be eating from Jezebel's table. So now the question is: since they are allowed to run around Adventism serving food from Jezebel's table, my question is: where is Elijah? And in the type when Elijah was sent by God to expose the iniquitous practices of Ahab and the priest and the elders in Israel, nobody appreciated no. the message and the work of Elijah. If God didn't protect Elijah, they would have stoned and killed Elijah. Have mercy. This is where we are. Yes, indeed it is. And, you know, as you mentioned that he and others of his... Um, companions are 
eating from Jezebel's table and serving from Jezebel's table is very interesting because in the article, he says that we should be able to look to others, look outside of Adventism to find the remnant. So just as he has redefined what keeping the commandments means, he has redefined also who constitutes the remnant and what the remnant is. The Bible tells us clearly what the remnant is. It tells us that in Revelation 12, 17. But this is what he says. In this illustration, the meaning of keep is not only a focus on guarding possessed treasures, but on searching for treasures beyond. For Jesus, who perfectly kept the commandments of God, the work of living as a keeper of the commandments included not only protecting what was held already by Israel, but being on the lookout for what others, the outsiders might have as well. <laughs> Let's pause right there. So you mean to tell me Jesus, who is defined as the truth in John 14, verse six, he says, I'm the way I'm the truth and I'm the light. He had to look outside of himself to find the truth. This is pluralism. This is basically stating that there's more than one way. Jesus is the one way to salvation and the only way. And if Jesus had to look outside to find others who have the truth, who gave them the truth? If Christ came to present the truth, who gave these individuals outside of Israel the truth that caused Christ to have to look outside to find others who had the truth? It's just absurd. It's, it's nonsensical to say the least. But listen, as we go forward, he then begins to share an experience of his upbringing. He says, I grew up in the hills of Appalachia, big quilting country and most famous. Perhaps you've heard of them. Remnant quilts. Listen carefully. Do you know that term remnant quilts? These crafts are as described beautiful tapestries of leftover remnant material stitched into magnificent creations. These women and men have great eyesight. They can see a remnant here. They can see a remnant there. Here a remnant, there a remnant, everywhere a remnant. What might this approach do for Adventism? What if we became remnant quilters? What if instead of simply looking to ourselves as God's faithful fabric, we began to play the role of treasure hunter? What if we started to bless the world by naming other threads, which are beautiful, which are God. Wow. So now he is saying that instead of looking to ourselves as seventh day Adventists, as God's faithful fabric, as God's faithful remnant, we begin to play the role of a treasure hunter. What if we, as Seventh day Adventists right now, started to bless the world by naming other threads? So, right now, we are not the remnant only. Other people out there are the remnant. And who are the remnant? Let's pause. Who are the remnant? Let's go slowly. Mm -hmm. They that, let's go back now to chapter 12 of the Revelation, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep, keep the, the commandments, commandments of, of God, God and have the, the testimony, testimony. of Jesus Christ. But Alex Bryant says an atheist. Wow. Can be a remnant. A professed atheist. Is a remnant. Wow. Do you see that, friends? Wow. It's deceptive. And it, he still is a Seventh day Adventist pastor. Listen to what this statement mm. says in early writings. Page 124, it says, The different parties of professed Advent believers have each a little truth, but God has given all these truths to his children who are being prepared for the day of God. He has also given them truths that none of these parties know, neither will they understand. Things which are sealed up, 
to them, the Lord has opened to those who will see and are ready to understand. If God has any new light to communicate, he will let his chosen and beloved understand it without their going to have their minds enlightened by hearing those who are in darkness and error. You could read the rest of it, my friend. Now, in closing, in that sermon from Alex Bryan, he said these words, My fellow Adventists, our opportunity at the dawn of this new movement. It's interesting. He built this whole sermon on the point that since Ellen White died, we have now come to what? A hundred years? Yes, a hundred years. All right. So now in 2015, according to him, we have begun the second century after the prophet died mm. and now he's saying we have now dawned on a new movement redefining what the remnant is redefining what it means to keep god's commandment saying the premier commandment is taking care of the environment mm. and this supersedes obeying the ten commandments from sinai his words yeah. he shows he's now demoting the the keeping of the sacred hours of the sabbath and say we must now exalt the material world this is truly a new movement yeah. listen to what this says in selected messages book one page 204 it says and we know this it says the enemy of souls has sought to bring in the supposition that a great reformation was to take place among seventh-day adventists and that this reformation would consist in giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith and engaging in a process of reorganization listen now the sabbath of course would be lightly regarded as also the god who created it nothing would be allowed to stand in the way of the new movement the leaders would teach that virtue is better than vice but god being removed they would place their dependence upon human power which without god is worthless their foundation would be built on the sand and storm and tempest would sweep away the structure who has the authority hmm. to begin such a movement Pause right there. Which conference president is allowing this to go on in their churches? Which union president is allowing this to go on in their local conferences? Which general conference leader and, and president is allowing this to go on in the various churches? Who has authority to begin such a movement? And those who are standing for present truth, they are the ones who are barred. They are the shut ones out. who are modeled. Yes. They are the ones who are shut out. It says, we have our Bibles. Mm -hmm. We have our experience. Then inspiration closed by saying this. Sister White says, I hesitated and delayed about the sending out of that which the Spirit of the Lord impelled me to write i did not want to be compelled to present the misleading influence of these sophistries but in the providence of god the errors that have been coming in must be met meet it amen and you know it's interesting that the context of that very statement that you read she was dealing with the living temple a pantheistic book written by J. Harvey Kellogg, John Harvey Kellogg, and the same errors that were exposed, that we exposed through this sermon are pantheistic. And so God expects us to meet it, meet it, and to avoid it. When you see the deception, avoid it. And we'll close with these words from Ezekiel 18. And this is what the Lord is saying to us. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? And then he cries and says, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. And then he says, turn ye, turn ye, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Why will you die? I, it is our prayer, it is our desire, 
that if you have been taken in, if you're being held captive, if you believe some of these same sentiments and theories and ideas that were promoted and promulgated in this sermon by Alex Bryan, I pray that you repent. I pray that you fall upon your face and cry out to God for deliverance. There's no excuse why any of us should be lost. God has given us his word. He has given it to us and he wishes not that any of us die. Father in heaven, grant us the revival and the reformation that we all stand in need of. Please, dear God, awaken the leaders to their condition that they may receive the remedy that you have laid out in your words in Revelation 3, the message to Laodicea. And I pray not only for the leaders, but also for the people that we all will fall on the rock and be broken and truly be new creatures in Christ. For if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And once we are truly converted, then we can receive the outpouring of the latter rain and truly reflect your character, present the present truth to a dying world that you will have a harvest of souls when you return. All these things we ask and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for watching Prophetic Insights. And until next time, may God bless you.